of the word by our guest speaker. The session for prayer this morning will be led by our sister Melvin Vosibori, Brother Ambrose Banyi, Sister Frida Mungo, and Brother uh, Dr. Dan Motanya. We will have testimonies from Sister Regina Nyakondo and Sister Emily. Thereafter, our leader will introduce the guest speaker. Our lead chorister will be Dana Osiemo. Welcome and God bless you. Amen. Can you hear me? Amen. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Amen and amen. I'm over. Hello, hello. Hello, Emily, can you hear us? Hello. Yes. Yes, let's have an item, a music item by Emily, please. OK, thank you. Why should I feel discouraged? Why should those shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven home? When Jesus is my my constant friend is he, his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me, his eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow. And I know he watches. Let not your heart be troubled. He stand the word I hear and resting on his goodness. I lose my doubts and fear. But one step I may see is always on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches. Me, I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For his eyes on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. Whenever I am 
tempted when evil thoughts arise, when songs keep less to sigh, when hope within me dies, I draw the closer to Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. Now we are entering into the prayer session. Melvin, are you with us, Melvin? Ambrose, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Yes, I think. Uh, you can go ahead. All right. Thank you. Let us pray. Mighty God, everlasting Father, we give thanks and glory to you, Heavenly Lord. We thank you for your care. We thank you for protection through the night, Heavenly Father, Lord. Now that we've gathered here in this Zoom platform, Lord, to worship you and to give glory unto your name, Heavenly Father, we don't take it for granted, Lord. Lord, it's not that we were righteous yesterday, that you gave us life today. But in your word, you say that your great is the faithfulness and your mercies are new every day, Heavenly Lord. Lord, we sing them this morning, Heavenly Father, Lord. We continue asking you that may you please guide us throughout this activity and the rest of the activities of the day, Heavenly Father, Lord. Lord, this morning, I bring special prayers to you, Heavenly Father, Lord, through our leaders, Heavenly Lord. You know that uh, you have put them accountable and to you for the authority comes from the above heavenly father lord lord in as much as they lead us heavenly father we ask that may you please continue providing them with wisdom and knowledge in that as they uh, administer their uh, charges and their duties heavenly father let it not bring glory to man but bring glory to you heavenly father lord lord you have provided unto us a sanctuary that we are yet to complete to build heavenly lord we know that silver and gold come from the above heavenly father lord we ask that may you please continue providing unto us that we may finish this project and resume uh, our normal services, Heavenly Father, Lord. We ask this short prayer, prayer believing and trusting in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I am praying for restoration of sanity in our homes and our families. Heavenly Father, today we urgently purpose to pray for sanity in our homes and our families. We ask for your guidance that we might walk fully in your path. This morning, Father, I pray that you may locate and reign in each and every home represented here. Restore sanity back in our homes. 
My father, we ask that you may mend the cracks that have been exposed by the evil ones. Father, we have family members that are not speaking to each other. We have siblings that are not in good terms with each other, oh dear Lord. Father, may, be, may you be the negotiator this morning. Father, we are praying for peace in all the families. Visit our homes this morning, Father. We also need spiritual, physical, and even financial restoration, oh Lord. Father, our finances are not doing well, oh my Father, and they are bringing a lot of conflicts, oh my God. Father, fill our pockets. Father, give us our daily bread that we may be healthy for you. There are those of us, God, who are grappling with health challenges in the families, dear Lord. It may be a sick parent, it may be a sick sibling, it may be a sick child, or even someone in the larger family who has health challenges. Our great physician, we ask that you may restore their health and also provide the finances that are needed, oh Father. Father, visit those who are sick amongst us. Father, visit them, dear Lord. We are trusting on you. Jehovah, remind us to lean on your word when facing the challenges. Even when our prayers don't seem like they are being answered, oh Father, let us continue trusting in you. When things do not go our way in our families, be the negotiator. When our children stray from your path, savior like a shepherd, guide them back to your fold. When resources run low, dear Lord, replenish for us. You are our provider, that our homes may experience your peace, your divine peace. Watch over us and our loved ones in our goings and coming out. You have done it before, dear Lord, and you're going to do it again. We honor you, we glorify you. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I am going to pray for uh, the businesses and jobs. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you because you have called us as your children and your promises are always true. You have asked us to trust you when, when things are not working. There came a pandemic which has now been with us close to a year. It has not been easy for our, in our jobs, in our businesses, some which have closed down. Your servants have lost their jobs. That means their families lack provisions. Your people are not able even to give to completion of your sanctuary just because their incomes are not right. How we pray that, Father, you go before us. You bless us in our going out and even in our coming in. You have given us jobs so that we witness for you. How we pray that uh, wherever we are working, people might be able to see you every day. Let the, job, the jobs that you have given us be a reason that your children may know that you are soon coming. Our businesses, that are serving humanity in different ways, we pray that you replenish and also bless them. Give us customers. Let us serve humanity in a way that is different from what the world does. We thank you because of your promises. And we have seen actually in the Bible that when you call your children, you gave them blessings. And this is what we are asking this morning, that Father, you may give us blessings in these areas that we have prayed for. We thank you for our young people, some who are looking for jobs. Our Father, we pray that you open doors for them. There are those who might even be planning to go for interviews. We pray that you give them favor. Father, we thank you. We glorify your name for our church. And we thank you that you gave us this opportunity this morning as even the rest of the program continues. We pray that your spirit may prevail. Thank you once again. And thank you for hearing and answering our prayer for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.
Melvin, are you with us? And what else? Dana. I think uh, looks like Melvin is not with us. We can have Dana. We can have a music item from Dana. Dana can bless us with a music item while we wait for the next program. I can't hear Dana.
Thank you. I hope you have been blessed. Amen. Amen, Dana. Amen, Dana. Yeah, that's very good. Now it's time for us again to, to worship the Lord with our testimonies. God has been very gracious to each and every one of us. We all have testimonies. But in this particular time, because we can't all of us fit into the program, we have two sisters who have uh, testimonies that they would like to share to us. So we want to give them an opportunity to share with us what the Lord has done to them. Amen. Amen. Emily, are you there? Yes. Good morning, saints. Uh, Good morning. What I'm about to, what I'm about to share uh, is not per se a testimony, but it is something that affects all of us. Uh, I've also I've also been indeed there, but uh, I hope that we will all be challenged. Uh, what I'm about to share is on painful memories persisting. When painful memories persist. Uh, many at times you find in today's community, there's a great, great emphasis being placed on dealing with painful or disturbing memories. But not all the theories being offered to deal with these problems are in keeping with the scriptures. Though some suggest that painful memories like being severely hurt, most of the time you find you have, we have been hurt. And the people who hurt us are people who we love people whom we are together in church, people whom we are together in a certain community are the ones that hurt us most. But we cannot uh, ever completely forget what has been done to us. Most of the time we really don't forget what has been done to us. But what God is able to do is that he's able to remove the burning sensation that accompanies hurtful memories and deliver us from their cutting achievements. So before we ask God to deal with any disturbing memories of the past, we ought to consider carefully the possibility of hatred, bitterness being resident in our hearts as a consequence of what has happened to us. Sometimes we have theories of counselors uh, encouraging people that picture in your mind, just picture in your mind that person who hurt you or abused you. Just picture the vent and vent their hatred or bitterness on them in an imaginary way. Uh, I've, many times I've found that even counselors sometimes mislead as much as they are doing it to help or, or for money. But this is a technique that is in conflict with the scriptures, as I, I can say that I found out. But the Bible encourages us to forgive our enemies, not rail against them. When forgiveness flows from the heart, then the condition is right to invite God to remove from the memory all sense of heart or shame. I, I relate it to the Bible, uh, the story of Joseph. We all know about Joseph. Though he had been flung into a pit, into a pit, sold by his brothers, slandered by this woman, and, and thrown into prison. But there came a time when all this was behind him. And he realized that after his firstborn son had, had, had been born, that God made him forget this. And he can also do it for us. It was not that his memories of past had been obliterated, no. It was rather that the sharp age had come off them. And what God did for Joseph, he can also do for you. I know many of us are hurting, we are all hurting in one way or another. And it's a challenge that I want to give to each one of us that our prayer will be, Father, that through and by your grace, I offer forgiveness to all those that have hurt me or abused me. Take each one of your hurting memories, tell him to take the hurting memories and remove the pain. Minister your heart, love and healing to me. That should be our prayer for each one of us. And as I finish, I want to share with you the, the, 
the, the words of Nehemiah 1 when he says, when I had these things, I sat down and wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And this is the one thing that I need to encourage each one of us, that God who is on the throne, God who is in the throne is going to enable you pass through the abuses that you've gone through, the, the, the part that you have gone through because of the loved ones hurting you and enable you that you may be able to forgive, okay? That God, his eye is on the sparrow. That eye that is on the sparrow is going to help you remove that speck from that person so that you may be able to forgive. And may the Lord help us even as we enter into another new week that we may learn to, to ask God to enable us to be able to forgive and leave the past to be the bygone. May the name of the Lord be lifted. Amen, 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 Emily. Regina, you're next. I don't know whether you're with us. Regina? I think if Regina is uh, not ready or not with us, we can go to the next item. The youth choir.
Thank you, thank you so much for that uh, item from the Youth Choir. And we want to take this opportunity to also thank Emily for sharing with us. That was really encouraging. We thank the Lord for, for Emily. May you be blessed and all of us who are here today. And now again, because of time, we want to take this opportunity to, to invite the guest speaker. And uh, the guest speaker, I don't know. I don't know whether we all know her, but uh, her name is Winfrieda Mitekaro. She works with her husband in the Ministerial Association and Family Ministries Department from the East Central Africa Division. She's she's a shepherdess and a pastor's kid as well, and a prayer ministry coordinator for ECD. Both her and her husband come from Tanzania. They have three young adult sons and one daughter-in-law serving God in their passion. This is indeed a woman of God and she's committed to, to serve the Lord. Let us take this opportunity to invite her, to share with, her, with us what the Lord has prepared for us. Madam Shepherdess, the floor is yours. Good morning, sisters and brothers. Good morning. I am so pleased this morning and uh, to be in this platform for the first time. And I have been blessed from the beginning. Thank you for such wonderful music. I think it was Emily Makoro and the rest who were singing. You know, it takes a gift to have a beautiful voice in the morning. You see, not everyone can sing so well in the morning. Thank you, uh, Sister Sophie Mogaka. I am so happy to see you face, uh, your face now. We have been communicating and my sister, she's very friendly. We have uh, uh, talked as if we knew each other. So it is such a blessing to be a family of God. And um, in a special way, I also want to thank the youth choir. Having youth is an assurance of the future church. And we thank God for their participation in uh, spiritual things. I also want to thank Karengata family for being a praying church. A praying church can defeat so many things. A praying church um, can kill conflicts, can uh, advance in mission because their focus is on God. So we don't take it for granted when the church comes together. And I really praise God for that. I want to also thank my sister who gave the word of encouragement. Forgiving is not an easy thing. And thank you for encouraging us that as we are Christian, we ought to forgive one another. This morning, I thought of sharing something with you and knowing that by the grace of God, it will help someone as it has helped me as I have been thinking about this topic. And I think you, are, you have already familiarized with the topic that I've uh, said, it is speaking to bless, speaking to bless. And I, I am requesting the host that I can share my screen if it's that is possible. You can share now, you can proceed. Okay. 
Are you able to see? Yes. Maybe I'll make it bigger. Okay. Shall we pray before I proceed? Loving Father, our Creator and our Redeemer, what a blessing that we can come before your throne of grace this morning. In the book of Isaiah 55, verse 11, you have promised that the word that comes forth from your mouth will not return to you void, but it will accomplish what pleases you. So Father, we pray that you fulfill this promise today. I pray that you will use me, you will touch my lips, that I won't communicate what is not coming from you. That by your grace, you will enable me to communicate the message that you want your people to hear. In Jesus' name, I pray and trust. Amen. <clears throat> I want to bring also greetings from my family. Um, my husband had wished to be with us here, but he's committed this morning. And uh, so he greets you. I told him that it is not only uh, women who are there, even Amo are there and youth are there. So he didn't wish to be here, but he could not, unfortunately, but he's extending his greetings to you. Um, speaking to bless, speaking to bless. You know, animals can communicate very well and they can understand each other. But one of the qualities that humankind were given by the creator, God, which distinguishes them from all other species is the ability to speak and to have languages. And here in Kenya, I think you know well the value of languages. I can, I, when I came to Kenya for the first time, I was surprised to see that even the, the, the mission I mean, the Sabbath school coteries are translated in many, many languages. There are Luo, there's a Kisi, there is a Kikuyu, the, the Swahili, and so many other languages. Something that I, I was not, you know, uh, used to, uh, uh, knowing that my background in Tanzania, the only language we translate into is just Swahili. So we have English, Swahili only. So when I came to Kenya, I so you are very rich, you know, in that. So having language is something that is unique in human being, which animals do not possess. But have you ever paused for a moment <clears throat> to, uh, to see how many organs are involved to produce a sentence? You see the Bible in the book of James talks of a tongue. Tongue is an organ that is responsible for speech. But it's not only the tongue. It takes so many organs. As I was reading, I came across these facts. I wonder it's not, okay, now. Yeah, that there are so many anatomical equipments that are required for speech. <clears throat> For, for any one of us to produce a sentence, then the larynx are involved, the vocal cords are involved, the tongue itself, the lips, the jaws, the lungs, the teeth, you know, the nasal cavity. You know, someone who has no teeth, even the speech is different. The diaphragm, the trachea, and extra, you know, so many things are involved to produce just a single sentence or even a word. So um, looking at this, it makes me praise my creator, God, that what a wonderful God 
who puts such a mechanism, who specializes these things just to enable us to speak. Remember when God was creating, he used word, words. Words have a creative power. And you know, even when we speak as human who were created in God's image, our words do not land in vain. They must accomplish something. You know, um, children who grew in abusive home, even if they were not beaten physically, just the words were able to create a specific personality because of words that were speaking, or spoken unto them. So um, I thought it is good to discuss about this important theme as we are in the beginning of this year. Being created in God's image, we are higher than any other creation. And he had an intention that through communication, through our words, through languages, we will be able to communicate with him and our fellow human for his glory. And we have been doing that. So many prayers have been offered this morning. That is our communication with him. We are communicating to one another. <clears throat> we are sharing God's word. We share the words of encouragement. We share words of love and hope. It is uh, by this gift of speech that God has given us. I know we are experiencing a life that is called a new normal. I was wondering how we are going to go back again to the society because I hope uh, through our prayer, we will go back to the so-called new normal. We are going back to talk to one another, maybe without a mask. We're going back to shaking each other's hand. Maybe we will hug each other again. We will sit next to each other in the church. We will visit our neighbors. We will uh, be in the office uh, with a closer proximity without any challenge. What are we planning to do as soon as God answers our prayer and brings us to uh, back to normal life. Are we going to speak words of hope? Are we going to speak words of encouragement? Are we going to speak the words of love and acceptance? What are, what are we going to be doing? Now, after God had created language in us, I don't know what kind of language Adam was communicating with God. I don't know. But it must have been a beautiful language. Because this language did not have any negative element in it. Can you imagine Adam and Eve communicating without sin? One thing I'm, I'm tempted to think is that maybe their languages, their language, I mean, had few words because Negative words are so many, many. They have added a lot of vocabulary in our languages. And these negative words were brought by the devil. He interfered just as the, the God's plan. And he introduced negative speeches like murmuring, fault finding, gossiping. Imagine all these words were not existing in the life of Adam and his wife. Abusive language, discouraging words, spreading rumors, lying, distorting the truth. He brought so many, many words. And um, you can think of uh, just one word in your own language. As I was preparing this lesson, I just uh, a thought, a word, 
um, in, in, in Kiswahili. You see, Tanzanian in Kiswahili. Yeah, I thought of just a word of a, a negative word when someone tells you, I will beat you. I was counting words, different vocabularies for that word. I found sick just for that word. You can think in your own language as well. Negative words are so rich, I think, because we are so much possessed by the devil. The devil has really influenced the communication in this world. And so he interfered God, God's intended plan to communicate with him, to please others, to edify each other, to, 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 to encourage one another. And he brought these uh, negative words that I've just mentioned and more, many more, you see. <clears throat> now, words are incredibly powerful. When we use words for the will of God, we can build up, we can encourage, we can motivate. But on, on, the, on the other hand, words are, inf when the words are influenced by the devil, they can tear down, they can hurt, they can cause horrible scars. Neg in fact, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, negative words last longer than even positive words. Negative words have the power to delete positive words that were spoken earlier. Our key text that we have this morning comes from the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21. By the way, uh, the book of Proverbs uh, chapter 15, 16, 17, and chapter 18, they speak a lot on the topic of communication. When you have a time, you can go through and read those chapters. So in verse 21 of uh, Proverbs chapter 18, the Bible says, life and death are in the powers of the tongue, in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat their fruit. Imagine, life and death. These words, for me, they mean a lot. They tell me that when I speak, I don't just speak. I should be very much careful with what I say because whatever I say, it may mean life or it may mean death. Have you ever heard people who commit suicide just because of the words that they were saying? And have you ever heard also people who have changed their mind to hurt themselves just because someone spoke encouraging words? Like what our sister uh, was doing this morning encouraging us to forgive. These words have not just come and landed in vain. There is power in the word, power in the tongue. And um, you, you, you know what uh, James says. In fact, he talks more about this, that the tongue is, uh, is, is like a, it, 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 it is so small, but what it can do, it is amazing. Oh, sorry, I want to go to the next slide. I don't know. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and <clears throat> words, they matter very much to God. And that's the reason we spend time talking about it. Why? In the book of Matthew chapter 12, verse 36 to 37, the Bible says that a judgment is coming. And that it says, but I tell you that for every idle word men may speak, 
they will give account in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. As I, as I was preparing this, an article which said, uh, which was giving um, shocking statistics. It said approximately an average person, you know, when we say average person, it is those people who do not speak a lot. And maybe an average person is a man, because as for women, we speak a lot. And uh, this uh, statistician said an average person speaks 11 million words per year. Now I said, oh my, I started calculating the years I have lived. If at all, I am an average person, how many words have I spoken in my lifetime? And you can calculate yours, just take that simple mathematics, just 11 million words per year. For example, maybe it is even more. How many words have you spoken in your lifetime? Those who are 60, those who are 50, those, even those who are 20 in this platform, how many words have you spoken? And these words, what was the content in these words? What did we speak? Did we fulfill God's intended purpose? Or did we hurt someone in the process of speaking these words? And uh, Jesus reminds us in the book of Matthew that all these words will be brought to judgment. We will give an account. And therefore, words matter to God. It's not, not just uh, words that are spoken and that they just go like that. We would give an account to those words. And Jesus, when he was speaking to his people, he wanted us, us to have concern for the impact of our words on others. Because when we heard, we heard someone, we heard Jesus. Now, there are so many biblical principles in the word of God in regards to words. Now, um, I will just highlight a few, few biblical principles. And <clears throat> one, principle number one is that when we speak, we should refrain from attack words refrain from attack words. You know, sometimes words can be used as a weapon. And in fact, a person who can speak very well and, can, uh, uh, and, and um, uh, happens to abuse that ability of speech can hurt someone more than even uh, the, the, using the physical abuse. Has someone ever told, uh, spoken to you in abusive manner to the extent that you felt like, why don't you just beat me and leave me alone? Because those words uh, are like sword. They can tear up, they can, uh, they can um, de uh, demoralize, they can create someone who was um, um, confident, become so uh, inferior it can develop an inferiority complex in a person. Um, the Bible says, in the book of Matthew chapter five, verse 44, the Bible says, but I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. What's the Bible trying to say? That no matter how people behave against you, 
bless them. By blessing, you are refraining from attack words. I think this is in line with what our sister uh, Emily was saying. Blessing your enemy means forgiving. When we forgive, we bless. When we pray for them, we bless. And in fact, we, uh, the Bible is not, is you know, it's not telling us that we should just love those who are lovable. When we got married with my husband, we, there is something we discussed. And we decided to make an agreement and promised each other. We said, we know in this journey, we will have conflicts. And as you know, married people, there's no marriage that has no conflict. People quarrel, people misunderstand one another, people differ. And of course, if you are normal people who have come together in this world, differing, a differing and, 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 and uh, misunderstanding is a natural thing. So we said, no matter what, let's speak to one another with respect. We will not raise our voice, even if there is any disagreement. And you know, I really thank God for that. We have been married for 31 years now. And we've never raised high the voice. It doesn't mean that we, the, the, we, we don't differ. We have so many things that we differ. But we don't raise our voices because this is a person you expect to live with the next day. And you know, Africans, can choose words to hurt someone. I don't know other people, but Africans, an African can call you a dog. When they are very angry, they don't choose what to tell you. Now imagine you tell someone a dog and then you sleep in the same bed again. That was a dog. Huh? You call him uh, or her rubbish, foolish. And that's the same person you still want to uh, live together for the entire of your life. And one day, because of this, our son asked us, and he was, I think he was about 20, one of our sons asked, and he asked me, he said, mom, have you ever quarreled with dad? And I told him, yes. And if we quarrel, did you want to hear it? He said, I don't hear. But doesn't mean that we don't. But we decided to keep that promise that we promised each other, that you will keep your voice low. You will keep the dignity of, of me. I'll keep the dignity of yours. Because after all, we have to learn this life together. So refraining from attack words can save us from many harm in our lives. Um, when we refrain from attack words, we speak gently. The Bible from the book of Proverbs chapter 15, verse one, I think you are very familiar with this verse. It says, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word steers up anger. You can communicate the same message, but gently. And you can, <clears throat> you can help a person know that I was wrong, even if it was spoken in a soft manner. We refrain from attack words by being gracious in our words. Proverbs says, 16 verse 24, gracious words are honeycomb, sweet to the soul 
and healing to the bones. And the Bible in the book of Ephesians says that when we, uh, uh, in, when we speak to our uh, friends, to our neighbors, to our spouses, to our children, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but what is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace to the hearers. So if the words are not edifying, there's no use of using them. Number two, uh, principle number two, refrain from gossip. My sisters and my brothers, I want to tell you gossip is sweet. Gossip is sweet and it's hard to refrain from it, especially for us women, you know it. How, how do we react when you hear people talking about maybe a choir member who is not uh, married is now pregnant? When they talk of a church elder who uh, maybe has been uh, um, caught in adultery, how do we speak those, those, those words? Even if you're not speaking, you want to hear what people are saying. And you know, not every sweet thing is healthy. Even many of the junk food are sweet. They taste good, but they're not good for our health. Just to let you know that the gossip is sweet. People cannot doze when gossip is going around. They would rather go doze when there is a sermon being preached or when there is a class going on, but not when gossip is going on. So the Bible says, Proverbs 16, verse 18, a perverse person steers up conflict and a gossip separates close friends. You and I are witness of people who used to be good friends, but because of gossip, because of, you know, uh, yeah, they are no longer friends. It is always good to be careful about the news we share concerning others and listening to gossip. When we listen, what is our comment? Uh, what is our reaction to gossip that is being said? So it is, it's not just about talking about, uh, or about gossiping, but even listening to gossip. What, do, what difference do we make as Christians? Yes, another principle is use clean words. I don't think maybe, maybe I don't think this is, your, is, uh, is the problem for us here, yeah? I, I cannot expect, maybe I don't expect a Christian or an Adventist woman, an Adventist youth, an Adventist man, man to use abusive words. You always use clean words. I have just put principle number three, just by the way, in case there is any. But I think the Karangata people, these people who wake up early in the morning to pray, they always use clean words. And may God bless you for that. Um, principle number, number four, use truthful words. Yes. Lying destroy our credibility. It's such an embarrassing thing when you are told that you are a liar. In my lifetime, I know a church elder who was disfellowshipped because of lying. You will not hear it uh, so often, but people lie. 
When we lie, we belong to the father of all lies. And we know the end of this father. Satan lies. And he puts lies in the minds of people. People, people are not satisfied when they speak the truth as it is. And but the word of God is telling us not to lie, to speak the truth. Now, having said those four principles, you may find many more other principles in the Bible, but I just decided to share those four. When I come to that point, my prayer is that God may help us tame our tongues tame our speeches. And why should he tame our speeches? Because the love of Christ is the right course. When you love someone, you'll be very careful what is that person. When the love of God is in us, it drives us to speak with care. Just imagine <clears throat> someone has offended you and you want to correct that person, how do you speak? Because you love that person. The fact that he has offended you does not make you hate that person. You love because there is a love of Christ in you. How do you do it? You do it with love. And when you do it with love, you'll be gentle. You'll be grace, gracious and you will be peaceful as you speak. And a good example that I can give is like when someone uh, tells you, an object has entered my eye, please help me. Because you love that person and you don't want to hurt that eye, you don't want to damage that eye, what you will do to correct or to remove that object in, in the eye, you won't use a knife, you want to use a stick, you will use something that is gentle because you want to maintain that eye of your friend. And that principle goes when we correct someone we love. When Christ in us, he becomes the force that drives us to do what pleases him to our friends, to our neighbors, to our children. And we tell our tongues because we will give an account on the judgment day. That itself is enough to help us be careful on what we speak to our neighbors. And also we tame our tongues because we can edify others as Paul said, uh, we read. Yes. Um, why should we tame our tongues? Because it is not easy to undo the damage caused careless words. I came across, maybe you have seen this communication. I, I came across in, on WhatsApp, someone shared this. I hope it didn't happen. You know, sometimes people crack jokes on WhatsApp. And these were exchange of text messages between the husband and wife. A husband said, you are negative. And listen to the response of his wife. If she said, and you are stubborn, arrogant, a low life, care about no one but yourself and your friends. All you are interested in is your own self. All your life not fulfilled, even one of your promises. It is only I who is putting up with such a miser and insensitive man. You're good for nothing, fat, ugly, even your hair transplant fade. Oh my, I said all these words as a response to just a single word, you are negative. And listen to what the husband did. He said, I was just informing you that your COVID test is negative. Then the wife said, oh, sorry. 
Do you think this story deleted all these words that she poured into the mind of her husband? The husband now knows what his wife thinks about her, about him. And it has damaged her, him. And to undo what she has already said, a word sorry is not sufficient. As I was reading somewhere, um, the, the, um, people were talking about parenting and they said, if you speak, let's say one negative statement to your child, especially an adolescent or a growing child who is, a, you know, yeah. The, the, when, when, when you speak one negative word, you will need 20 positive words to delete that negative word in the mind of that child. You see, it is not easy to undo the damage caused by careless words. I remember there's a time when there was a children's story. It was a women week of prayer. And uh, there was this illustration. The, 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 the author of the story said, if I only could swallow back my words. And so children were given a bowl and they were given a a uh, uh, toothpaste and they were told to squeeze it and put it in a bowl. And then they were given toothpicks to return into the toothpaste. Children, they tried, they tried, they tried, but they couldn't. Because once uh, it is, um, you cannot put it back in that tube because it is not easy. And the same thing happens when the words has gone. I think you, you all have experienced this. You speak a word and you wish you could hold it back, but it's already gone. A word spoken is gone. And if it has to cause damage, it has already caused. And uh, uh, amending the damage is not as easy as you think. So we should Term our tongues because it is not easy to undo the damage caused by careless words. Um, another reason why we should term our tongues is that we do not know what people are going through in their hearts. You may meet a person, a person used to greet you, and this time she or he doesn't greet you. And you go to your neighbor and tell, him or her. You see this person, I don't know what has changed him or her. She doesn't greet. Maybe because she has a new job. She has become uh, so proud of herself. But do you know what is going on in her heart? Maybe she has got bad news. Maybe she, she went to hospital that day. She was diagnosed that she has one month to live. We don't know what is going in people's hearts. And that should be enough reason to be careful on what we tell people. Have you ever talked to someone, something negative, and then the following day you are told that person is no more. Or you regret, you say, oh, how I wish I had talked an encouraging word. Yes, I want you to share with you this uh, small video that I came across to emphasize this point that you don't know what people are going through, what people are thinking in their hearts. And you can just watch and see.
Yeah. Um, I'd like us to think of the last question that was asked, that if you could hear what people hear, feel what they feel, see their thought, would you treat them differently? And this should be the motivation that because we don't know what is going in people's mind, we should treat them better. Here we have a formula of transformation. And this formula has the word think. And it says that before you speak, think first, is it true? Or is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Or is it kind? If you think it doesn't qualify all this, it's better to leave your intention of speaking, to put your words aside. If it is not true, if it is not helpful, if it is not inspiring, or it's not necessary, or it's not kind. Now, it's my prayer that God will transform our words or transform our tongues. And you know, this is not something which is our making. We are not able to transform ourselves unless the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts and brings that power to overcome the, 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 what our human nature is prone to. You see, we are prone to revenge. We are prone to speak and to make that person feel what uh, we wish that person would feel. Yes, but Jesus wants concerned with the impact of our words on others. You see, one small comment or remark can make the difference between building a relationship or tearing it down. We have the power to either encourage or destroy others with our speech. And the impact of our words towards others cannot be overstated. And it is my prayer, and I think it's your prayer, that we will ask God to do something. Any transformation in Christian life is a result of God's doing. Let us tap into God's help because Jesus is in the business of transforming lives. Let us surrender our lives to him. Paul says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away and look, the new things have come. As we are moving into the year in, in, as well, continue to work in the year 2021. There are so many things that the world is going to offer unto us. We are going to meet many people. We are going to collide with so many people. May God help us that whatever we speak, we'll speak words of hope. We'll speak words that would edify we will speak words that will encourage, that would touch people's life, that people will say, oh, it's better I met my sister so-and-so. It's better I met my brother. What an encouragement he gave me. And may we determine to surrender our tongues, our lips, our all to the Lord, because he is the one who can transform us. We are not able to do it on ourselves. And I know God is faithful. He has promised he can do it. Lord, transform our tongues. May God bless you as you continue to walk in this year, 2021. Our tongues may be sweet as the honey to those whom we will utter our words to. May our husbands, may our wives, may our children be uh, inspired by the words that we speak to them. Be edified, be comforted, 
be transformed for better for the words that we are speaking. And one day when Jesus comes, when he will be giving an account, you know, the account that he will give is not only for negative words, even for the beautiful words we uttered to the humankind, we will give an account and God will, Jesus will say, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you so much and may God bless you as you continue to contemplate on this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, thank you, our sister. Amen. Thank you for this opportunity to have allowed yourself to be used by the Lord this is very, very timely in this beginning of the year when we all want to make resolutions to change. We have been reminded that it's only God's power, authority that can empower us to make these changes in life. We truly want to emulate his son, Jesus Christ. And uh, with those words you have given us, the Lord has given you to share with us. We pray that we can be able to be transformed so we can do what he desires of us. Thank you so much, sister. May God bless you indeed. And uh, before we come to the close by inviting the elder, let's see if the church choir can bless us with an item. Otherwise, Elder Mitito will do the closing remarks. Let's see if the church choir is ready. Uh, the, the youth choir, sorry, youth choir.
que esse menino aqui vai... E te estupro, mas tinha que tirar a cebuca aí? Uh, good morning. morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Ella. Thank you so much, uh, our sister Winfrida Mitikaro, for blessing our souls this morning. Uh, I was I was careful to pick some words and to write them down, and for speaking on that difficult uh, topic of speaking to bless. Uh, I, I, I did not realize that you are a mother-in-law. Uh, congratulations with Pastor. You, you've done really, really well. And uh, may you pass our love and regards to your family. And we'll be, we'll be uh, calling you soon to speak to us again. And uh, let me commend you also on your mastery of the English language. I thought you were going to speak to us in Kiswahili, which I really love, though I don't know how to speak it well. May God bless you and keep you uh, with your family and to keep your ministry. And to my sister, Sophie, I really don't know how to address you. Calling you Sophie might look <laughs> that I'm not disciplined enough, but allow me to call you Sophie for what you've done. Uh, you've been, you pitched this thing alone uh, together with your team. Uh, we thank you so much this morning. And uh, my sister Emily Mokoro, you blessed our soul and we learn that forgiveness is important. Uh, thank you so much, our members who have been watching. I know there were a number of elders who logged in and I can also, I know my pastor is also with us uh, for giving us this platform uh, to worship God this morning. And I just wonder, how life will be without women in our midst. I am almost tempted to say that life can go on without men, but I probably don't know whether it can go on without women. And uh, ladies, thank you so much for keeping our church strong in prayers, uplifting us uh, every day when you're down. We don't take it for granted. And may God bless you this day. And for our men who came, I think at one time we were 94, 95, Thank you so much for joining hands and we will continue to have this uh, together. And for our technical team, I know most of us might complain of uh, the sound is down, this is not working, but I know you have done a lot of work behind the scene and may God keep you and we'll continue to pray for this uh, platform that God will help us to worship without the interruption that the devil normally brings. And uh, allow me to tell you that very soon, with our prayers, we'll worship again in church. And God will give us a chance to worship together again. May God bless you and may God keep you. And before we close, allow me to pray with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the powerful words that you've spoken to us through your servant, Winifred, O oh God. We thank you for the message that was so clear and spoken in a, in a, in a female voice, O oh Lord. That Lord, as we begin the year, we may change and follow your word and encourage one another as we walk together in this life. Thank you so much for the women ministry, for the uh, effort that they have been making over the years to bring us together and to pray for the church and pray for the nation. And Lord, these two years will never will not be different, O oh Lord, that women will come out and worship you in their tears, O oh Lord, as they kneel down to uplift this nation, uplift their children, uplift their husbands, uplift their, uplift their neighbors in prayers, O oh Lord. And may you work mightily 
in their ministry of Jesus. We thank you for each member that was here with us. And as we break now, Father, I pray that you may dismiss us, O oh Lord, with your, uh, with your love, and may you bind us together in one accord and as, until such a time when we'll convene again to worship your God. May your love be with us. May your grace be abundant. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. I think we can, uh, after this, we, we shall be proceeding to church again for the business meeting. That's true. That, communication. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good day to all of us. Thank you, Speaker Winfred. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful God. day. You too. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless everyone. Thanks, Pastor. I didn't Thank notice. You, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, I've been here. Because you've registered with Infi Infinite. Yeah. I, I, yes. I, sorry. Yes. I could yeah, see you, better. but I saw a young man somewhere. <laughs> sorry. But thank you for joining uh, with us this uh, morning. Thanks. thanks. With, with, we thank the Lord for everything. Okay, so bye. 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 Praise to his holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Winfrida. Bye. This is Irene. Bye. Hi, Irene. Thank you for coming. Thank you for blessing us. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. Greetings to your family. Thank you. Thank you. We do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.